All right, I want to welcome those joining us by TV, radio, and by live streaming all around the world. We thank you for coming, joining us in our service today. I want to make an announcement real quickly. Um, those of you that uh, maybe have went to our website and tried to make a donation through PayPal, uh, we didn't realize it, but that has been um, having some uh, technical problems with that. We didn't know that to just recently, but we have got that updated and upgraded, and you can go if you want to pay your tithes or make a donation from somewhere uh, and you want the convenience of that. Uh, we have that ability now. There's a donate button at the bottom of every page. You can connect with PayPal, or you can go around PayPal and just pay through your credit or your debit card. So anyway, there will be a, a notification at the end of this uh, program uh, if you're watching my TV and radio that will tell you about some changes in the ministry and some uh, opportunities that you now have uh, to be able to help us expand and do uh, the work of the Lord. All right, in Numbers, uh, chapter number uh, 13, the book of Numbers, chapter 13, we got some things in the Word of God that I want uh, to share with you. Then I want to go into uh, 1 Samuel and read some things there in the Word of God also to be able to hopefully encourage you and to be able to show you uh, there's a whole lot of difference in looking at things from the wrong perspective than it is in looking at things in the right perspective. If we're looking in the right perspective with the eyes of faith, we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus, and there is nothing that we cannot overcome. But if we're looking in the wrong perspective, then we're going to be hindered, and we're going to be held back, and we're not going to be able to do the work of God, and we're not going to be able to have the resources, even in our family, even the spiritual resources. We're not going to have the revelations, amen, from the Word of God. Yeah that we need to have if we don't have the right way of looking at things. Amen. And we're going to be looking at some things here today, and I'm going to be preaching a message entitled, Looking at Things Through the Eyes of a Grasshopper. Looking at things through the eyes of a grasshopper. And there's where a lot of people are today. They've got the grasshopper vision. Amen. I want to be a giant slayer. That's the vision, amen, that I've got today. Praise God. I don't want to look at things through the eyes, amen, of a grasshopper. And we're going to see some things in the Word of God, word that Moses had sent them out into the land to spy out the new land, amen, that was in front of them, amen. And they went over and they spied it out, and they came back with two different reports, they came back, amen, with people looking that had the mind of a giant slayer. And then they had people that came that had the mindset of a grasshopper. Amen. We'll read in the Word of God what they saw and what they envisioned. Amen. And then we're going to go and read about David. Amen. The giant slayer and the faith that he had. Amen. And to realize that we, if we are the child of the Most High God, God. Amen. There is not a hurdle that we cannot overcome. There is not a mountain, amen, that we cannot climb. There is not a giant that we cannot bring down. There is not a devil that we cannot bind in the name of Jesus. Amen. There is not a financial, amen, wall, amen, that we cannot in time, amen, be able able to jump over. Amen. Listen, David said, by my God have I leaped over a wall. By my God have I run through a troop and a troop would be amen, a garrison of 60 or more soldiers. Praise God. Amen. There's not anything that we cannot do if we've got the eyesight, amen, of a giant slayer. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. So many today has missed out uh, and they're held back. I'm going to start preaching before I get the scripture read. I never was good at putting things together in the right place. Amen. All right, Numbers 13 and verse 26 says, And they went 
and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran and Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land uh, whither thou sendest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there, and the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites, uh, and the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are able to overcome it. Praise God. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land, which they had searched until the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 40. Listen to what the Word of God says about little David. Amen. Facing the giant, Goliath, over about nine and a half feet tall. And little David, a little fair-complected ruddy lad, down, short, weak-looking, kind of pale-looking. Looked like he couldn't whoop his way out of a wet paper bag. Amen. When the giant was looking at him, but oh, little as much. <laughs> Amen. When God is in it. Amen, praise the Lord. And the God of Israel was upon David. And David was not a grasshopper. David may appear to be a grasshopper, but old Goliath didn't realize there was a giant slayer standing in front of him that was empowered by the Holy Ghost. Amen, then whatever he spoke with faith, Amen should come to pass because he was backed up by the God of Israel, the God Jehovah, Jireh, the God that shall provide. Praise the Lord. First Samuel 17, verse 40 says, And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in the shepherd's bag, which he had even in a scrip, and his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David, and the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thee I give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. 
This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and unto the wild beast of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. Let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we're thankful today that the battle is not ours, but it belongs to the Lord. And Father, Lord, to all of those that are battling cancer, I rebuke that enemy today in the name of Jesus. And all that are battling diabetes, I rebuke that enemy and that giant in the mighty name of Jesus. And all of those that are suffering, our Lord, from high blood pressure, and those that are suffering from anxiety, and those that are suffering, our Lord, from uh, uh, other things, Lord, I pray, God, that's hindering them, uh, uh, Lord, from being able to be productive uh, uh, in the kingdom of God and those that are not able to be the wife that they would like to be or the husband that they would like to be or the pastor that they would like to be or, Lord, the church uh, uh, worker that they would like to be or the, uh, the the Christian that they would like to be or, Father, the not able to run their business uh, like they would like to run it and not be able to do the things that they need to do. Father, I bind them things uh, in the name of Jesus and I proclaim Lord that there is power in the name of Jesus and there's victory through the blood of the Lamb and there is an anointing uh, amen through the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost uh, that has been given to the church uh, amen to those that would cry out to you and to those that would believe. Uh, Lord, we know we can dance, Lord, on our tombstone. Amen. We know, God, that we've got victory. Amen. Over our checking account, over the bills in our mailbox. Amen. Over the relationship issues, whatever it may be, the work related problems, whatever it may be, we know that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. And we stand with authority this day and ask you to release into those people that has faith. Lord, not to those uh, that thinks they have to give money to the preacher in order to receive power, but those, Lord, that has faith uh, in a risen Savior that's standing with their feet in on the word of God and has hope in Christ Jesus. Lord, we just pray today, God, to release into them faith and favor and help us, Lord, amen, to take off our grasshopper glasses and put on our giant slaver, uh, uh, slayer, goggles, Lord, and get us prepared for battle. And it's the mighty name of Jesus we humbly pray and ask all these things. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Give him honor, praise, and glory. He's such a mighty God. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost moving in this place today. I'm thankful today that my victory, amen, doesn't come from headquarters, amen, from a denomination. Amen. My victory and my hope doesn't come from the Pope. Amen. My victory doesn't come, amen, through a man's organization, but my victory comes, amen, through Christ Jesus, amen, that gives me power, amen, to tread on the the heads of scorpions uh, gives me power, amen, to be a conqueror in everything that I do. Uh, Brother Jimmy, do you think you're going to be a winner? I know that I'm going to be attacked. Uh, I know that I'm going to be stricken uh, and smitten, uh, amen, with problems, but during those times, uh, it will give me a chance to regroup, uh, rethink, uh, charge up, pray, and realize that greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world. Amen. I'm thankful that God is going to bring me through everything. Praise his holy name. Amen. Moses knew that God, amen, it brought them through everything. Amen. He delivered them. Amen. From the hands of Pharaoh. Amen. The miracles that the children of Israel saw. And then they began to answer 
anger God, amen, as they begin to question him, amen, when they come up, amen, to the first challenge, amen, after the blessings that they've received of God, amen, Moses knowing, amen, that the promised land, amen, was just before them, amen, if you're going to be a good leader, you always send out a scout, amen, to go and find out what it is that's in that land, what am we going to come up against? Is it going to be good? Is it going to be evil? Amen. Joshua went over into that land. Amen. And when he got over there, he saw all of these big men. He saw all of these things. Amen. That was there. Amen. The Canaanites. Amen. And the Amorites. And all these others that was there. Amen. But he looked at the milk and honey. He said, well, the milk and honey, amen, is worth the battle and the God that's always backed us up, he'll help us to get this too. Amen, there's not anything, amen, that we cannot get if we'll put our faith and our trust in God, have a mind to work, amen, pray together in one mind, in one accord, amen, God will release into us favor, amen, victory and power through the Holy Ghost, amen, to receive those things, amen. But all there was those, amen, that didn't have the faith and they didn't have, amen, the outlook, amen, that Joshua had and that Aaron had and that Moses had, amen. See, there was a whole lot of people, amen, had the eyesight, amen, of the, of, of the ones that went in and saw themselves, amen, as grasshoppers, amen. The problem was bigger, amen, than the, uh, the, the reward that they was gonna get, Amen, Joshua went in, he saw the milk and honey, he saw the giants in the land, he said, so? This is so much worth, amen, worthy of going after. And the God that's empowered us, I don't see a problem at all. Amen, with the God we got on our side, just a handful of giants is not going to be anything, but I see the milk and I see the honey. Ooh-wee. Man, it's going to be good. Man, it's going to be so good, it ain't even going to be funny how good it's going to be. And we're going to put a whooping on them giants and take this away from them because God has got our back. He's on our side. He's victorious and he's in control of the entire universe. But oh, those that went in that didn't have the faith, amen, that Joshua had, amen, they didn't see the milk, they didn't see the honey. All they could think of, amen, was the Amoritites, amen, and the Canaanites, and all those big tall men, amen, they were scared to death, amen, they come back and they reported to Moses, oh no, we can't never do this, we're not gonna be able to buy the carpet for this church. We're not going to be able to overcome, amen, the cancer. We're not going to be able to overcome, amen, this need that the church has got. We're not going to be able to overcome, amen, this bankruptcy, amen, a threat that I'm about to, I'm scared I'm going to have to file. We can't ever overcome that. Oh, but yes, we can too, amen, and I'm not facing anything like that, but I'm just telling you, amen, there's not anything that you face, amen, that you cannot overcome, Amen, through the blood of the Lamb and through the word of your testimony. Praise his holy name. Amen. But see, the, uh, those looked at the monsters, the big, tall men, uh, and they said, well, uh, when I, we are as nothing but as grasshoppers, uh, amen, in front of them big giants over there, and this is the way they look at us too. Let me tell you something. I, I want you to hear me. Amen, you grasshoppers, I want you to listen to me. Amen, for just a moment. Uh, amen, I spoke about the giant slayers. Uh, amen, I'm gonna talk to you again here in a little bit, uh, but I'm gonna talk to the grasshoppers. Uh, amen, the reason why, Amen. You're a grasshopper is because the enemy sees you as a grasshopper. Amen. They said, well, the giants, uh, well, we're our grasshoppers. Uh, that's the way they look at us. Uh, amen. When the church, uh, amen, is whipped, uh, amen, and beat down, uh, amen, and scared to death, uh, amen, ran by the people, for the people, by the people. Amen, and of the people, uh, amen, you're scared to death, uh, amen, that the Wilson family's got more than the Jones family, and they'll outvote you. Mm, don't get 
get me started on this. Uh, amen. Listen, the church uh, of the Laodiceans. Uh, amen. Thank God I'm one of those uh, in the church of the Philadelphia. Amen. The ones that's prospering for God with God and those that are led by the Spirit. Uh, amen. The spiritual people today are being pushed away. Uh, amen. And pushed back. Uh, amen. By the carnal. Uh, someday I'm going to get a chance to preach uh, a message on the wheel, inside the wheel. Uh, amen. Thank God I'm the wheel. Uh, and you're the wheel inside the wheel. Amen. Listen, there's a power. Amen. That's being distributed today. Amen. Among the Holy Ghost filled people. Amen. Those that will stand on the faith that they've got in a risen Savior. Amen. That knows that I'm not going to die. I'm not going to lose. Amen. I'm going to win. And I'm going to be an overcomer. I don't know yet how I'm going to do it, but this is going to be good. I don't know how I'm going to get through this uh, and what's going to be the outcome but there'll be some changes uh, and it'll be good uh, amen when I get through this uh, and I just can't wait to see how God uh, amen is going to do this uh, amen those today that are whipped uh, amen you're going to look uh, amen like you're whipped and I'm just going to go ahead and bring it out here just like it is uh, amen those people don't go to church half the time don't hardly ever pay their tithes uh, amen they're in and out and up and down and wishy-washy and live in fear amen they're in entire life, amen, they're good to hug on, but they ain't good to work with. Amen, they're not good. Amen, to get them to pray. Amen, for you because they're going to get pulled away. Amen, listen and get so much stuff going on. They ain't going to have time to pray for you because the devil's going to have them uh, through fear and uh, some kind of tactic. Amen, all the time. Listen, I wouldn't aim to get into this, but there's a lot of grasshoppers today. Amen, they, they got them. Amen, every got a news channel. Amen, on everything. They're watching the news. They got a scanner in the kitchen. Amen, they stay on Facebook all the time. Amen. They listen to the drama queens and the drama kings and they're just like this. Oh Lord, have mercy. What are we going to do? We're here in the last days. I don't know what we're going to make it or not. I'm just going to break out in whelks any minute. There's going to come a storm and it could blow the church away. Why, it could kill us just any time. Oh Lord, what in the world am I going to do? Amen. I don't want to call on somebody like that. Amen. To help me pray. Amen. Because I'm afraid what I ask them to pray for, I cause them to have a stroke. I want, I want to be able Amen, to get a hold of somebody, amen, that I know, amen, that speak in faith, and when they pray, they shake the gates of hell, amen, because hell knows, amen, that I caught up this morning, and I called on Jesus. Woo, amen, how much you think a grasshopper is going to be, let's all charge hell together. I don't know if we could ever get there or not. Amen. But if we all get there, we'll flutter our wings a little bit. He remember when them giant slayers gets up, he man looks at that nine and a half foot tall giant and say, you got your sword, you got your shield, you got your spear, but I got somebody in me that you can't see. You're a nine and a half foot tall, but the one that's got my back has got his head sticking above the universe in places that the spaceships ain't been yet. Whew. Hey, man, you won't even come up to his ankle. And if you knew what's good for you, you'd get completely out of Israel and take the whole Philistine army before all of you dies. Hey, man. Because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And I'm going to believe, amen, I'm going to overcome this cancer. I believe I'm going to overcome this heart disease. I believe I'm going to overcome. And Brother Jimmy, I got trouble with my liver. God will heal your liver or heal, amen, or he'll give you a new one, amen, through a transplant. Amen, anything's possible through God. Amen, there's not anything, amen, that you cannot, cannot overcome. Amen, I love the mentality, amen, of the giant slayers. Amen, now them grasshoppers makes me nervous. Amen, to be around them. Amen, about all they can do is rub their legs together. Amen. Make a little bit of noise. Amen. But that giant slayer, amen, they, listen, they're going to come and say, I just wanted you to know, Mr. Giant, I'm fixing to feed you to the fowls of the air. I'm going to cut your head off. Amen. No doubt that giant, amen, Goliath looked at David and said, you have lost your ever-loving mind. 
Amen. Listen, folks. Amen. What he didn't understand was what you're seeing is just a man. Amen. But there's a God bigger than the universe lives inside. How in the world do you get that big a God inside a little bitty body? I don't know, but he does it. Amen. I don't know how he gets fits all himself. Uh, amen. Inside of our heart. Uh, I don't know how in the world he moves. Uh, amen. Uh, through our faith. Uh, see, if we expect, uh, amen, to win, uh, you're going to have that mentality. Amen. And you're going to win. Uh, amen. That's not because you're a positive thinker, just because you know, uh, amen, that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Uh, amen. I know that we're overcomers. Uh, amen. Brother Jimmy, do you think everybody in the church is going to be like that? Well, of course they're not. Amen. There's only a handful of people. Amen. The straight is the gate and narrows the way. Amen. Which leadeth unto life. And few there be that finds it. But broad is the gate and wide is the way that leads unto destruction. And many there be that enters therein. Amen. Let me tell you something. Brother Jimmy, you think there's a whole lot of grasshoppers around? Oh. I sure do. A whole lot of grasshoppers. Amen. You ever hear them locusts? Hey, I mean, you get out here, them kind of me. And you hear all of them uh, uh, singing their little song, uh, all of them together. You think, wow, what's going on? Uh, the locust is ringing. Oh, yeah, that's the modern day church. Hey, mm. remember them spirit filled. Uh, hey, man, Holy Ghost believers. Uh, hey, man, that believes. Uh, hey, man, that God's going to get them through those, uh, through this thing. Uh, hey, man, those warriors with faith. Uh, hey, man, has the ability. Uh, hey, man, we not, might not be quiet. Uh, we just shake the ground when we move, though. Giant, I'm a coming. You better run if you know what's good for you. You way up there, but I'm fixing to bring you down. Hey, Amen. Old David, he went down to the to the brook. He got his sling. He got to, uh, five smooth stones. Got one for him and uh, his four brothers. If I have to fight them, I'll take the whole blessed family. He man got five smooth stones. Amen. Put them in his little pouch. Amen. And then here it was the king. Amen. Tried to put his armor on him. Amen. And he, I said, this armor weighs more than I do. I can't fight no battle with this armor and shake this thing off of me. Get it out of my way. I don't need those new versions of the Bible. Amen, I don't need your programs. I don't need the smoke, amen, to rise up, amen, through smoke machines on the end of the pulpit. I don't need strobe lights a flashing, amen, on me while I'm a preaching. I don't need that kind of armor, oh man. I don't know who you're getting this or not. I don't need that, amen, because what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just come in front of him just like I am because of who, not because of who I am, but because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And I'm going to take what God has gave me, amen, the gifting that God's gave me, and I'm going to bring an old boy down. Amen, he don't realize he's defied the armies of Israel. He's blasphemed the name of my God. And he said he's got to go. I've got to bring him down. Amen, whatever it is that's in your way today, amen, you need to curse that. I didn't say cuss it. I said curse it. Amen, in the name of Jesus, curse means to speak against, uh, amen, to challenge it, uh, amen, to declare, amen, that death is coming to that challenge, uh, amen, that means to curse it, uh, that it's going to be gone, God's going to destroy it, uh, you need to look at that thing, uh, amen, with faith, uh, amen, not as a grasshopper, and don't you let the enemy see you as a grasshopper, amen, if the enemy sees you as a grasshopper, you will finally see yourself as a grasshopper, uh, amen, and the enemy will be a giant, uh, and he will continue to grow, uh, if you will allow him to grow and you'll continue to get smaller. Amen. But those that has a little faith, amen, Jesus tried to teach us, amen, that those that has a faith of the size of a grain of mustard seed shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and it shall be plucked up and cast into the sea. Amen. Those that has faith and believes, amen, there's not anything that we cannot overcome. And what we need to do, we need to curse that giant. Amen. Whatever that giant is, Amen, that's in our lives. Amen, we need to curse that in the name of the Lord. We need to know and believe in our heart. Amen, that I, this is not going to bring me down. I have nothing to be scared of. 
Amen. See if David, uh, amen, he'd been like a lot of modern day Christians. Uh, he'd have sized that thing up. Uh, he'd have looked that thing up one side, uh, amen, and down the other and been scared to death of it. Uh, amen. There's been people today, uh, amen, that would be scared of anything. Listen, I've had people all down through uh, years of my ministry thought that, Jimmy Wilson, you have lost your ever loving mind. Amen. A few years ago, we had the little church down the road. I had about 50 or 60 people. Amen. We had $5,000 saved up. And we bought this piece of property up here and gave $20,000 for it. Amen. Put five on that. Went and uh, borrowed 15. Bought this piece of property. Then we said, we're going to build us a church. I got to finding out how much that's going to cost, and everybody that figured it up said a half a million dollars. Well, you can't never take that many people. There ain't no way in the world you can take 60 people and build a half a million dollar church while you can't make the payments on it. You right. But see, God put a giant slayer spirit inside of me. I know I wasn't a grasshopper. Amen. Our people knew that we wasn't grasshoppers. Amen. Uh, praise God. Uh, amen. See, God can do the impossible. Uh, amen. We come up here. Amen. Put us a tin up. Uh, got ready to have a revival. I said, we'll have a revival the first year. We'll claim this in the name of the Lord. We'll let the community no, there's no church here right now. We ain't got the money borrowed. We don't have material. Just want you to know we want to welcome ourselves in the community and let everybody know, amen, that the church is coming on this ground. We're going to tear the barn down. We're going to take the fences down, amen, that's around the cow pasture, and we're going to have us a time. Amen. We set up a tent. Amen. The power of God began to move. Souls are getting saved. People getting filled with the Holy Ghost. We had us a time up here. Amen. The, one of the best revivals I've ever been in in my life. Amen. The next year we went to the bank. Amen. And the bank said, what are you going to use for collateral? I said, we got this little building down here. They said, well, that building won't bring but about probably $60,000. I said, so? How do you plan on paying for that? I said, the Lord's going to pay for it. Amen. So I don't know why other than God giving us favor, but they loaned us some money. Amen. I come back and I said, well, we got it. We got it, and I got everything lined up, and we got started on it. Amen. The foundation, it was going to cost $20,000 through a long process, and a whole lot of devil fighting us wound up being 40000 and, and, and then everything that was going to, it's just one problem right after another. I could go on and on and on and on. Amen. But there was a young man got healed right over here in this corner one afternoon. Uh, amen. His mother danced all over the platform, all around the platform. Amen. Uh, right here when he got healed. Uh, amen. They brought him in one afternoon. We didn't even have the doors and windows in the church yet. It was hot. Uh, amen. The dust went to fogging when they come in the gravel driveway. And she come up with tears in her eyes and said, Brother, Brother Jimmy, my, our son, he's a suffering so bad he can't stand it. I said, sit down right here, son. I said, I got a bottle of oil right here somewhere. I went and hunted up at you. You got to keep a bottle of oil with you everywhere. Never know when you're going to need. I got that bottle of oil, amen, and the ones that was with us. Uh, we took him old caps off, and we got over here, and we anointed that boy in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And I said, son, your pains are fixing to quit. Uh, it's fixing to be over. Uh, the healer's getting ready to come because I can feel him already, and I know he's on his way. Uh, amen. We anointed him with oil and prayed for him. Man, it wasn't just a minute, uh, amen, or, or two, and I praying. He started saying, whoo. He said, it's gone, it's gone. He said, Mama, it's gone. Amen. And Mama started doing this. Amen. Praise God. We had us a time. Amen. Listen, there was a man laying brick out here that was lost. Amen. He got saved. Amen. The bricklayer. Amen. Was a preacher. Amen. The youth pastor that went to another church. Amen. Several miles from here. He'd been talking to him about the Lord. And up on the scaffold up there. Amen. Laying them brick. He was standing on the ground and telling him that Jesus will save you right there. He said, I'm going to cry out to him right now. He got saved up on top of that scaffold. 
scuffle, scuffle. Amen. The preacher down on the bottom, crying and a slinging snot. Amen. Listen, as soon as I got here, he said, come here, pastor. I got to tell you something. See that young man right up there on the scaffold? He got saved about an hour ago. He said, I'm sorry that you missed it. I said, I'm sorry I missed it too. I said, congratulations, brother, and welcome into the kingdom of God. Amen. See, God can do all things. Amen. Some said you'll never get that thing built. It'll crumble down. You'll never get it built. You'll start it and it'll never be finished. I remember getting this thing finished and the first week after we had our first service in this thing, the one that said that came down the road in a car and I waved at them as it went by. Amen. Finished product, the doors open, already having services in it. Amen. Some said, well, I wouldn't be a member up there. They'll come get your house. They ain't enough of them up there left. While they had a church split and a fight up there, and, and they, they'll never get that thing paid for now. I wouldn't be a member. If I was a member of that church, I'd leave. While they'll be coming and getting your home. They didn't nobody have their home put up as collateral. They couldn't get nobody's home. See, ignorance don't realize how ignorant they are until ignorant speech, and then the giant slayers, amen, sees how small a grasshopper, amen, that ignorance is sometimes. Amen, listen, it's all about the perspective and the way that we look at things and whether or not we believe or don't believe. Amen, right now today, amen, there's a move across the land, amen, to get preachers like me off the air. Amen, there's a move across the land, amen, to get preachers that shouts and cries, uh, amen, and preaches born again experience uh, and tells about the Spirit of God, uh, amen. They want us to shut up, uh, amen, and quieten down, uh, amen, because there's a move, uh, amen, for a one world church uh, already been set up uh, or being uh, in the process of being set up, uh, amen. A one world government, amen, is right in behind that, uh, and that's being worked on right now, amen, as I speak, uh, amen. Those things, uh, amen, are coming coming to pass, amen, but those that believe, amen, there's a God inside of them, amen, letting them know you're gonna shout and you're gonna shine. It's still gonna take the old time, near out way to make it to heaven. It's still gonna take, amen, people taking their handkerchief and are drying the tears out of their eyes. I went to a conference this week and I knew I made a mistake by taking a one handkerchief to a two handkerchief service, amen, all I knowed was I I'll just fold it over to the other side and soak that side. But it's a feeling mighty good in here right now as we shout it and we praise God. Amen. Most of the churches across the land today, amen, if you had all the tears, amen, the whole church cried in the last five years. You get, wouldn't get one side of the handkerchief even damp. Whew. Amen. I feel like preaching today. Brothers, if you better not go back to another conference like that again, let me tell you something. If I had one next week, I'd be there if I'd get the money to go. Amen, let me tell you something, folks. Amen, it's time. Amen, we come together. Amen, get our grasshopper goggles off. Amen, put on our giant slayer goggles. Amen, and to say, devil, you own your way down. Amen, sin, you own your way out. Amen, I've had to tell the devil, get your hand off of my family. They're coming back into this church. They're they're gonna be in here worshiping the Lord. My grandbabies is gonna hear about Jesus. I'm gonna hug them as they get saved around this altar. I baptized a big part of my grandchildren and I told the devil the other day, I'm fixing to baptize the rest of them. Amen, when they get a little older. Amen, I already claimed them. Amen, in the name of the Lord. Amen, listen, we need to know. Amen, that the mountain that's in front of us. Amen, is only a molehill. Amen, <laughs> under the foot of the Lord. Amen. It's not anything. Amen. Under his feet. Amen. We can overcome this. We can do this thing. Amen. Through faith in God. I'm going to challenge you. Amen. Every church is listening to me by TV and radio. Get your pastor up. Make him go to a spirit field conference. I'm not talking about one of them denominational headquarter meetings when they go up there and argue over things and discuss where they're going to spend the money. 
money. I'm talking about go, amen, somewhere where the Spirit of God's moving, amen, to get a hold of God, amen, to where you can see him, amen, come out with a smile on his face, amen, to come back, amen, and preach, amen, to the grasshoppers, amen, and watch the grasshoppers start to grow in faith as they become, amen, giant slayers, and then we can slay the giants in our land today. It's by his stripes that we are healed. It's by the faith that we have in Jesus, amen, that's going to allow us to overcome, amen, these things. Amen, David, amen, reached into that bag, got one of them smooth stones out, put it in that sling. He looked up at old Goliath and said, well, I feel sorry for you. I tried to tell you what I was going to do. You still got them second or two. You can run if you want to. Hey man, you hear what I'm saying? Hey man, give you an opportunity to run. Hey man, if you want to. Hey man, but all right, you don't went too far. Hey man, old Goliath thinking, well, what are you gonna do? Ho, 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 ho. What are you gonna do? Am I a dog that you come to me with a staff? Ho, 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 ho. What are you gonna do? Hit my ankles? Old David put that stone in that sling. In the name of the Father, hand of the Son and of the Holy Ghost and the God of Israel, I bring you down. Here that stone went. Whoop. No glass here. Down on the ground he went. Hey Amen. David didn't have a sword of his own, so he just went over there. Hey Amen. Climbed up on top of him. Reached down in his sheath. Your sword to do. Goliath, you down, boy. And that head rolled off. I can see old David reaching down there and getting that head full of hair. Amen. Here's Goliath, your giant. Don't defy the armies of Israel or I'll get the rest of his head in a minute. They all said, we better go home. Amen. That little ruddy boy down there, amen, done got our ten, uh, nine foot, uh, six inch giant. Uh, amen. That's got all of this fighting equipment, all of this experience under his belt, uh, all of this knowledge and the armor that he has to protect him. Uh, and God has got his head. Uh, amen. The real God. Uh, amen. Through a little old boy down there. Uh, it's a sheep herder that can't do anything. But see, old David you, uh, amen, when he was talking to the king, uh, you just don't understand. Uh, there's somebody living inside of me uh, that my faith is in. Uh, he said there was a bear that come one time uh, after my father's sheep, uh, and he said I just killed him with my bare hands. Uh, he said there was a young lion that come, uh, and he said I got him by the throat. Uh, I, I killed that young lion. He wasn't about to get to my sheep. Boy, what a pastor. Hey, man, can I stop and hit a lick right here? Some of y'all think, well, our pastor's so quiet and he's so nice and he's so pleasant. You better get one that'll walk in like a lion. Hey, man, they'll say, for, for, uh, for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord and you ain't going to wear your caps in here and you ain't going to drink a bunch of stuff inside the church unless you're a little a child, and you ain't going to eat potato chips unless you're a baby. Uh, you adults, uh, amen, can eat and drink when you get home. Uh, we're going to set the house and God in order, and the rest of you going to get your clothes on before you get up here in the pool pit. Uh, if you're going to be naked, you need to go to the beach. This is a house of God. Amen. Get the place straightened up. Amen. Listen, getting things in order. Amen. And tell them when the Spirit of God moves on you, you obey the Spirit. But you start a bunch of fleshly mess, I'll set you down, I'll shut you up, and I'll put you in order. Amen. Like it's supposed to be because we're going to wait upon the Lord until the power of God, amen, comes in this place. And we're not going to do it until God moves. We're going to listen to him. Amen. Listen, there's a time right now today, uh, amen, where a lot of the pastors are being challenged. Uh, I just left Brother Tommy Bates Church and he was telling me about where he was challenged, uh, amen, with some, or telling the congregation rather, where he was challenged, uh, amen, with some things uh, in his church, that spirit, uh, amen, rose up inside his church, uh, amen, and tried to, uh, to question uh, his leadership uh, and ability to be able to pastor the church, uh, amen, and the way that thing's grown and uh, they're building a brand new building out there right now, and some turkey wanted to question 
his ability to be able to lead the congregation. I thought, man, he's all over the world uh, right now, and his ministries are growing in every direction, and they're building, getting ready to build a new sanctuary, and you ain't sure whether or not he can lead the congregation. Where the, uh, what part of stupid, uh, stupid tree did you fall out of? Hey, man, you know they're not being led by the Spirit. That's just plum goofy. I've had that kind of Spirit rise up here, amen, a time or two down through the years. I, I talked to a pastor yesterday, amen, the pastor of the church down in, tennis, down in Tennessee, amen. He lost his youth leader, and he took 20 people with him, amen, just recently, amen, over a bunch of stupid stuff, amen, just jealous, amen, because they won't sit under the authority of God, and they don't want to be around a, a Holy Ghost field preacher, amen. This pastor told me that the Spirit of God was so strong in this church. Amen. Sometimes he gets started speaking in tongues and couldn't stop. Amen. He said the power of God flows through that place. Amen. Like I've never seen it flow through anywhere before. He said, and the congregation just sits there. I said, well, <clears throat> y'all know what's fixing to come. I know what you're saying, brother. Amen. I got some in our church. Amen. They come in and watch television here in person. Click. Amen. That's the way that some of them are. But I got some that gets in there with me. Amen, brother. Preach it on. Amen. I'm not a grasshopper. I lost my grasshopper goggles a long time ago. I got my giant slayer uh, shoes on. I got my giant slayer glasses on. I got my giant slayer goggles pulled over my glasses. Amen. I got my helmet on uh, of salvation. Uh, I'm uh, thinking right. Uh, I've got the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Uh, and I'm ready to go now and invite people to come to the house of God. Oh, Brother Jimmy, now, don't, that, don't, I, that, you getting, you just getting plumb out in the field now. I come to be entertained. I don't come to work. Yeah, that's the way grasshoppers are. They look mighty small in the church. <laughs> Woo! In the church. But them giant slayers, amen, you know what they'll do? They'll step up with faith, amen, and when something needs to be done, Reporting for duty, sir. What can I do for you? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We got a need in the church. They run on the hip. And they said, well, that ain't no problem. I'll just dish her out. Right here, I got enough in the savings to pay for that. Don't worry about it. It'll be all right. Oh, Brother Jimmy, if I'd done that, my family would have a heart attack. I'd rather them have a heart attack because you spend it for God as having them fight and killing each other and hating each other guts and maybe all of them go to hell later on fighting over what you got. Uh, oh, I done quit preaching, got meddling in your business. Uh, amen, listen, uh, the only thing you're going to ever be able to take with you to heaven is what you give away. Amen. The love that you give away, the money that you gave to God. I'm not talking about giving it to some floozy preacher on television, amen, that wants another jet, amen, or three or four more diamonds on his fingers. That, he needs about this many rings. You don't see none, do you? No. Amen. My money goes into, or our money goes into ministry. Amen. We need to be able to get ministry oriented. Uh, amen. Get our giant slaying goggles on, uh, our mountain climbing shoes on, uh, get on our work clothes. Uh -huh. Sometimes when I go to the hospital, I don't look like a preacher. Got my old cap. Well, sometimes I take the cap off, leave it in the truck. Since I started wearing my hair a little different, I can do that. I don't, Chris, I don't have to worry about combing it now. I can take that cap off and meet the best of them. If the president was to come in, I don't have to worry about going to a mirror because I know it's going to look good. You know what I'm talking about, don't you, John? You can put a toboggan on, take it off, and a hair won't be out of place. Amen, if you can find one. But anyway. 
<laughs> Amen. That's the way that I am. Carl knows what I'm talking about too. <clears throat> Some of the rest of you has got hair. You wouldn't understand what I'm talking about. But anyway, sometimes I go in my old work shoes, uh, all scuffed up and uh, got ashes on them and stuff like that. And I'll go into the hospital. I ain't got time to go home, put on my preacher clothes. Uh, amen. I'm a preacher if I got on work clothes. Uh, and I'm a preacher if I got on a suit and tie or a suit without a tie. Amen. But what I'm saying is, uh, amen, I just go into the hospital. And I went in Friday. I said, I hope y'all don't mind. I, I got my work clothes on. They said, they don't mind, preacher. You dress like we do the most of the time. I fell in there and had prayer with them. You can feel the spirit of God in that place. It's not about the necktie. It's not about the coat and the shoes. Amen. It's all about he who lives inside of you. Amen. That's all that makes any difference. And the church today, amen, needs to quit worrying about your Sunday go to meeting clothes. Get your work clothes on. Listen, Amen. When the, you go and visit, uh, amen, the people's not interested whether or not you got a carousel umbrella and a big old hat with one of them peacock feathers sticking out of the back of that, amen, to go visit them, invite them to come to church. Amen. They're not interested if you got on a three-piece suit. They're gonna, first thing they're going to think is you're a reverend yours in this area. No, I'm teasing you. Amen. The first thing they're going to think, amen, that you you must be with the IRS or a revenue or something, amen, if you're all dressed up. But you just go in your work clothes because I'm on business for the king. It's not about, I got that John the Baptist spirit inside of me. Amen. I ain't got nothing, amen, but an old a, a girdle of a, a camel's hair. Amen. My loins, amen, girdy with that. Amen. All I got, amen, is locusts and wild honey to eat. My beard's growed out. My hair's kind of woolly and I don't smell the best. Amen. But I want to tell you there's a Jesus that loves you. I love you and I don't want you to go to hell. There's a better life. Amen. There's a way to get yourself amen out of the grasshopper mode. Amen. Into the giant slaying mode. Amen. And to know you can be a winner and worship the King of glory, the Lord of lords and the Prince of peace. Let's go to the house of God. God. Let's worship the king. Amen. Let's praise him. Let's give him honor. Let's dance before him. Let's shout before him. Bro, Jimmy, you lost your mind. Done that a long time ago. Amen. I give my heart, my mind, my soul. Amen. To he who hung on the cross. <laughs> praise God. Amen. I give all that I had. Amen. To him. I've sold farms. I've sold houses. I've got rid of cattle. I've done a lot of things. Amen. The Lord said, get rid of and draw a little closer to me. I got to work for you. Amen. I'm a backing out of the barbecue business and a slowly turning it over to my children. Amen. Why? I'm a getting ready to do more ministry. I'm getting ready. Amen. To step out with faith. Amen. And do more for God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. My mind is not on, amen, what I can do for me. But, Jimmy, I want to leave something good for my children. I already have. <laughs> Amen, through the plan of salvation, through my legacy. Amen, that is Jesus or you lost your mind. Amen, we talk about the Lord or we'll change the subject or I'll leave. Amen, there ain't nothing much in this world. Amen, to excite me. Me and my wife the other day was talking about got an opportunity to go a few days on vacation. I said, well, I got to find a church to go to. I said, because I'd rather be in a church than I had sitting in a lawn chair somewhere. Hey, man, getting ready to cook a hamburger under a tree. Can never pay back what the Lord has done for me. Never will I be able to praise him enough for what he's done for me. And I want to thank him for bringing my other two sons in church. Brother Jimmy, when did he get in church? They ain't cheap, and I want to thank him for it because they're on their way. I want to thank him for knowing him and for him being surreal and for him being alive. 
and for him being a God that I can feel. Amen. And for him, amen, being there when I'm broken and when I get scared, he gives me comfort. Amen. The Holy Ghost has hugged on me a lot of times. Amen. In the hours, we hours of the morning. Amen. When the devil will come through and there be a breeze of defeat. Amen. Let me tell you something, but there's sometimes, amen, I feel that breeze of joy. Amen. See, last Sunday morning when we had that Holy Ghost explosion that some of you missed, amen, and the power of God moved on me. While I was standing right here reading the Word of God, there was something. I know y'all going to think I've lost my mind, but I want you to see this. I was standing behind the pulpit. There was something hit my breeches leg. Went across that leg. Went across this leg right over here. Well, Jimmy, what was it? I think the angels, like me, he's clumsy and tripped. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but I want you to know that after whatever it was, it hit both. See, I ain't told you all this before. I ain't even told Jenny this, but it happened. It hit both of them legs. Hit button with just a minute after it hit them legs, whoever or whatever it was. If something went to rising up my legs, come across my back, amen, I'm across my shoulders, and next thing you know, I'm speaking in tongues. Amen, listen, folks, amen, I'm thankful that I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Amen, I'm not ashamed of the Holy Spirit. I'm not ashamed of God. Amen, and I'm not ashamed of the power, amen, that's gonna resurrect my body. Let me tell you something, folks. Amen, there's people that goes to church. They ain't enough power in their life, amen, to even quiver the dirt. Amen, let alone get them out of the ground. Amen, but I'm thankful that he who lives in me, amen, the giant slayer himself, amen, that lives inside of me. Amen, the, listen, the earth, amen, is gonna shake. The graves will bust open and the saints of God shall rise. Amen. And those of us that are left, amen, shall come in behind them and we'll meet them in the air. Amen. With he who's riding the white stallion. Amen. With all of the angels singing, Hi, Hosanna to the Lamb of God. The King has came. Glory. Hallelujah. Woo, and I'm going to hush. Again, here in just a minute, we was reading in Revelation. When we get to heaven, we're going to have a brand new song to sing. Worthy is the Lamb that was worthy to take the book, to break the seals, and to read thereof. Worthy is him. And John said there was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands that was singing together a new song in heaven. Then the 20 and four beast said, Amen. Then the 20 and the four elders fell down before him and worshiped him that all power, all honor, all glory, all praise go to the lamb that was slain and he rose again three days later. And today he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Stand with us. Amen. If you've got a need and you're here today, amen, we're going to give you a chance to come and pray. I want to say goodbye to the live streaming audience. Be back tonight at 645. Tune us in. God bless you and good day. But those that's left here uh, at the shepherd's house, uh, 